Hello! With this video, I would like to start a small series of videos about the history of socialist Czechoslovakia. To understand why was the afterwar situation of a CSR favorable for communists, we must recapitulate what happened to CSR during and before the Second World War. CSR was torn apart by Nazi Germany with the approval of Western nations with the signature of Munich Agreement. At first, Sutherland was given to Germany, Southern Slovakia to Hungary and Cieszynsko to Poland. In April 1939, the remains of the CSR were destroyed. Bohemia and Moravia became protectorate under German Empire and Slovakia puppet state of Germany. During the war, the exile government was formed representing the interests of the CSR. Benesch, during his youth, member of anti-Austria-Hungary movement and close co-worker of Masaryk, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the CSR, President after Masaryk's abdication in 1935, and a political supporter of CSNS, the Liberal Party in Czechoslovakia, signed a pact of a friendship and mutual assistance with USSR after his unfortunate experiences from 1938. This helped KSC gain influence in the exile government. The closing end of the war in April 1945, the Kosicki program was approved, which determined principles of the post-war political and economic system. The major change was the foundation of the National Front of Czech and Slovakians. National Front was supposed to be a coalition of major political parties of CSR, which would determine the post-war conditions in politics. The National Front consisted of KSC and KSS. Former was the Communist Party of Czechoslovakia and the latter the Communist Party of Slovakia. CSSD the Czechoslovakian Party of Social Democracy, CSNS, Czechoslovakian Party of National Socialism, CSL, Czechoslovakian People's Party, DS, Democratic Party, and the Party of Freedom and Party of Vogue. KSC was the strongest in the nation front, mostly because the anti-fascistic resistance were organized by its members. Also, the society was stronger for the Soviets because the majority of CSR was liberated by USSR army. At that time, the communists held the view of a slow transition to socialism within the new People's Democracy regime, led by the Nation Front. Social Democrats were mostly cooperating with the communists, though there were wing that didn't want to cooperate. Even though the CSNS had in its name the word socialistic, this party had nothing to do with Marxism. The main idea of the CSNS was to unite the good elements of the socialistic and capitalist system. CSL was a non-socialistic party. Main idea was that there should be very little regulation on capital and decrease of inequality. One of the CSL's wings was strongly anti-communist and wanted to orient CSL to the West. DS had pretty similar ideas to CSL. The Party of Freedom represented the interests of Catholics and the Party of Workers was the Slovakian Socialistic Party. Influential pre-war parties like the Agrarian Party or the Hlinkers Slovakian People's Party were well banned due to cooperation with the Nazis during the Second World War. According to the Kosice program, a new government was formed with a new chairman, Social Democrat Zdeněk Firlinger. After the end of the Second World War and its return to Prague, this government was to fulfill the principles of the Kosice program of a renewed Czechoslovakia. The first item the program was the issue of the deportation of Germans and Hungarians from the Czechoslovakia. It was clear that without deportation there was no chance of a stability in CSR, mainly due to hatred between Czechs and Germans after six-year-long Nazi occupation. 
uncontrolled deportation began immediately after the end of the war. Postopin Conference approved this deportation. Of the 3.1 million German population, only 170,000 remained. In 1948, mostly anti-fascists who were given a chance to stay. Nowadays, various representatives of student and German organizations judge this deportation, but I can't exactly remember who voted for Henlein and who contributed to downfall of CSR and who agreed with the Nazi German politics during Second World War. Hmm. Deportation of Hungarians was a lot smaller. It was more like exchange of a citizens between CSR and Hungary. By 1958, 90,000 Hungarians out of 700,000 living in the Czechoslovak Republic had moved from Czechoslovak Republic to Hungary and 71,000 Slovaks had immigrated to Czechoslovak Republic. Next up was the trial with war criminals and collaborants. According to the Benesh decree, a special people's court was established. By 4th of May 1947, 713 people were executed and 741 were set in prison for the remainder of their lives. 19,888 criminals were sentenced into prison for variable amounts of time. Next point of the Kosice program was the nationalization of a property of Germans, Hungarians and Czechoslovak collaborants. It was nationalized. 10,000 industrial businesses, 40,000 of craft enterprises, 2.5 million hectares of agriculture land. This was but the first wave. In October 1945, Benesh issued a decree of a nationalization of a key industrial branches, like the food industry and banks. By the end of 1946, 2,867 businesses were nationalized, which was the 17% of all businesses, but in which 61% of all workers worked. The communists were successful in pushing through reforms that Czech society needed. The next goal was to win elections in 1946. The main enemy of communists was the CSNS. Communists went to the elections with the slogans about the two-year plan which would restore the Czechoslovak economy and deepen agrarian reforms. The election for the communists turned out well. In Bohemia, the most industrialized area of the Czechoslovak Republic, the communists gathered 43% of the votes. In Moravia, 34% and 30% in Slovakia. Overall, KSC and KSS gained 114 chairs from 300 in parliament. A new government was formed, whose chairman was the chairman of the Communist Party, Clement Gottwald. The communists began to realize their election promises, which further increased their popularity within the nation. According to the two-year plan, it was planned to exceed the production in industry by 10% compared to 1937 and catch up with the pre-war level in transport and agriculture. The two-year plan was mostly successful, mainly in industry and transport. There was a problem in agriculture due to drought in 1947. In 1947, Czechoslovak Republic standed in a sense on the border because of a rapid division of the Europe into capitalistic and socialistic bloc. Czechoslovakia simply had to join someone or face the worsening situation caused by a crop failure. The Czechoslovakian Republic had the choice of either choosing the Marshall Plan, which was supported mainly by reactionaries from CSNS, CSL and DP, or to choose the USSR help, which was supported by the communists and the left-wing part of the CSSD. The option of a Marshall's plan assumed the orientation of the Czechoslovakian economy to the West and the weakening of the communists. The communists clearly couldn't allow a return to the first republic capitalism and reaction, 
so the Chesar resigned from Marshall's plan. Today, our reactionaries present this resignation as a loss of the chance for the Czechoslovakian Republic to build a successful economy. For capitalists, of course. But for the majority of Czechoslovakian citizens, the Marshall's plan wouldn't bring much, mainly because of the eternal hunger of capitalists who are only interested in their pockets. The popularity of the communists increased even more with the fact that the Czechoslovak Republic signed an agreement with the USSR according to which the Czechoslovakian Republic was to receive 200,000 tons of bread and 200,000 tons of grain, which saved the Czechoslovakian Republic from starvation. The communists also had other successes, such as the approving of a millionary levy to cover drug damage. At the beginning of 1948, the political polarization escalated. The representatives of the interests of the West and the local bourgeoisie understood that at such pace the communists will quickly gain ultimate power. Right wing of CSNS, CSL and DS became more and more louder inside those parties. Communists understood that political crisis is inevitable, but they knew they could count on the support of the population, which was confirmed during the February coup. Or that's at least how our reactionaries named the legitimate transfer of power by communists. The reactionary parties launched their attack on February 10th, 1948. The plan was to make enough ministers resign so the Gottwald government would fall. However, the chess there did not support the section by the reactionaries, so in the end only 12 of the 26 ministers resigned. The communists understood what was happening and immediately began to mobilize the people for their support. Subsequently, Gottwald suggested to Benesch that he should accept the resignation of the reactionary ministers and approved the addition of the government according to Gottwald's proposal. On February uh, 21st, a demonstration of uh, 100,000 in support of the communists took place in the old town square. This did not end the victorious camping. People's militia began to form in the resistance to a possible attack of the reaction and on February 24th, there was a one-hour strike in support of the communists, which was attended by 2.5 million people. On February 25th, Benesch, despite being on the side of CSNS, accepted the resignation of the ministers and approved the new Gottwald government, due to the full support of the communists by the people. Furthermore, the reaction in the Czechoslovak Republic no longer had a chance. The nation front was recreated with the reactionary elements purified from it. On the 9th of May, a new constitution was adopted and on the 30th of May, elections to the National Assembly took place, where the nation front overwhelmingly won. The KSC, KSS and CSSD, which merged into KSC in 1948, received a total of 226 seats. In June, due to the worsening health, Benesch abdicated and Gottwald won the new president election. The way to the building of socialism was open. Before we start talking about the Gottwald period, it would be great to say something about Gottwald himself. Gottwald began as an official in the Federation of Workers' Physical Education Front later working as an editor of a communist magazine. And from 1926, Gottwald worked in the Prague Secretariat of a communist party. In this position, he quickly gained influence in the party and at the 5th Congress of the Communist Party, his group got into the leadership of the party. In the 1930s, he significantly deepened his cooperation with the Comintern and also re-established the party, making it organization capable of facing future problems and obstacles. In 1948, with the help of the USSR, he tried to save the Czechoslovakian Republic from the Germans and disintegration, but after the Munich Treaty and the banning of the Czechoslovakian Republic, 
He had to move to the USSR. During the war he reached an agreement with the Banesh, which later led to creation of the Kosice book. After the war he firstly became Prime Minister after the elections in uh, 1946 and after the attack of the reactionaries in uh, 1948 and after the abdication of Banesh, he became the President of the Czechoslovakian Republic. And after he became President, the building of socialism began. One of the main things in the building of socialism is clearly the economy, and therefore the plan of the first five-year plan for the 1949 to 1953 was established already in autumn of 1948. Priority was given to heavy industry mainly due to the fact that heavy industry is the driving force of the economy. Also, one of the reasons for it was the Czechoslovakian Republic was to become one of the major industrial centers in the Eastern Bloc and it should not be forgotten that in the rapidly escalating Cold War certain preferences must be chosen and heavy industry is the basis of armament. The industrial production was to grow by 57%, heavy industry by 70% and industrial production in Slovakia by 75%. This plant also the mass industrialization of Slovakia begins. The plan was later increased in 1950 and 1951, which later began to cause problems because the increased plan could not be fulfilled. In this situation, there was some lagging behind in the light industry branch because, despite the fact that light industry grew, heavy industry grew much faster. Despite certain mistakes of the first five-year plan, I mainly mean the unnecessary increase in the plan in 1951, Czechoslovak economy experienced great growth in the 50s, and in the 1951 to 1955 period, the industry grew by 11% every year. As for agriculture, according to the first five-year plan, the volume of agriculture production was to increase by 37%. Collectivization also began. The first farmers were to unite in the collective farms of the first type, later to develop into fully-fledged cooperatives of a fourth type. Kulaks opposed collectivization and did not want to lose their position in society. Some killed communist officials, such as the incident in the village of Babice, where three communists were killed. Other devised smarter plans and deliberately founded poorly organized cooperatives to prove poor villagers that collective farms are bad. This happened, for example, in the village of Dodinice. The irony of fate is that at the time it was clear that it was all sabotages. But nowadays, unfortunately, there is only talk about how horribly the communists force everyone into the collective farms. Due to such collag sabotage by the year 1950, it was only 10% of all agriculture holdings in the YZS of a second, third or fourth type. By the 1953, collectivization had not yet been completed. Agriculture as well as light industry lagged behind heavy industry in the terms of a growth. And what was happening in the Czechoslovakian politics in the meantime? During 1948 the KSCN, KSS and CSSD merged into a single communist party. The number of party members is also growing rapidly and by 1948 there were over 2 million members and candidates for the party membership. Later, they started to further the surplus or the harmful people in the party. Despite that, the total number of party members was over 1.5 million people, which is a lot for a country uh, with just a little bit over 12 million people. The party had a problem with this because the newcomers did not have much knowledge of Marxism, but at that time this problem was not so obvious because the leadership of a Gottwald was firmly Marxist-Leninist and the influence from the USSR, which was a solid ideology must under Stalin, also helped. In the culture, there was a socialistic realism which elevated the proletarian culture. Now we are arriving at the most widespread and most deceived topic today, which are the political processes. This should be answered first. 
Was there a reason for something like that? For the political processes? He who knows history understands that after the revolution, the class struggle does not cease, but on the contrary, it is gaining momentum. And if we look at the situation in the Czechoslovakian Republic at the time, we will see that the reactionary forces have not disappeared anywhere. There were anti-communist groups such as the Machine Brothers, which operated from 1951 to 1953. They killed not only SNB officials, but also ordinary people who seemed to support communism. But in fact some of them didn't, at least fully. The Machine Brothers managed to escape to the West and to go to serve the Imperialists. Some from their group were less fortunate and were caught and punished. There was, uh, for example, also the Black Lion 777 group that did similar things. Anti-communist sentiment was also popular among Catholic Church officials. Say that there were no sympathizers of uh, anti-communist groups in the Czechoslovak Republic and that the communists were concluding political trials for no reason would be foolish. In October 1948, the law called Law for the Protection of the People's Democratic Republic was passed to suppress the reaction. As for the processes themselves, I will mention some of the most important processes. The trial of Helidor Pika, who was the reactionary element in the army, was executed for high treason. The trial of Milada Horakova, a senior functionary in CSNS who led the traitors' activities and intelligence. The traitors were also in the ranks of the party itself. Here, the most famous trial was the trial of Slansky, which was executed for sabotage. And the Gottwald, 241 people were executed. That's how great was his terrible terror. The Gottwald period is now considered a terrible thing and Gottwald himself has been blamed many times by today's historians. But it is clear that, um, at least to communists, that this period was the period of the greatest develop of the Czechoslovakian economy and society. A few days after Stalin's death, Gottwald also died. This caused a stir in the communist party. Antonin Zapotocki became the successor in the president post. Zapotocki began his communist career in the trade union movement. During the World War II, he was uh, imprisoned in the Sachsenhausen concentration camp. And after the war, he became a member of the presidency of the Central Committee of the Communist Party, UKS chair. After the election of Gottwald as president, he was appointed to prime minister post. Following his election, several important changes took place in the economy. Monetary reform was approved. Cash up to 300 Czech crowns, Czechoslovakian crowns, was exchanged in a ratio of 5 to 1 and deposited up to 5,000 also in a ratio 5 to 1. Higher cash and deposits were to be exchanged at a less favorable ratio. This reform was uh, proved to limit the rich. After this reform, protests and demonstrations began in Pilsen. As Zapotocki promised that monetary reform would not take place. The demonstrations were mostly anti-communist but also pro-communist. After several days of chaos, order was restored and leaders and coordinators were arrested. The government responded to these events by adjusting economic plans. Uh, the priority was slightly changed from heavy industry to light industry, and the situation in agriculture was improved. For the second five-year period, 1956 to 1960, it was planned to increase industrial production by uh, 54% and also to accelerate the growth rate of living standards. Collectivization continued in agriculture and the whole process was completed by 1960 
and the agriculture production returned to the pre-war levels. However, one reform was carried out which became a promotion of the reforms of the 60s. Its name was Rossipol's reform, which was to decentralize the economy which greatly destabilized the economy. It was very similar to the economic reforms under Khrushchev in the USSR. The misstep led to the failure of the third five-year plan 1961 to 1965 and the abolition of the five-year plan in 1962. And how the economists decided to fight such a problem will become clear in a few years. While the economy was going through difficult times, what was happening in the politics of the Czechoslovakian Republic? After Zapotecki became president, Anton Novotny became the first secretary. Anton Novotny had been a member of the Communist Party since 1921. Until the war, he held several positions in the party. During the war, he was imprisoned in the mauthausen gusen concentration camp. After the war, he was already a member of the UVKS chair. Novotny was a great supporter of Khrushchev and his main task was to push anti-Stalin's policies in the Czechoslovakian Republic. The de-Stalinization began in 1956. If Stalin was criticized in the USSR, in the Czechoslovakian Republic it was mainly Gottwald, although Stalin as well. The statement that the class struggle doesn't cease under socialism but on the contrary develops was rejected, and even the first ideas in the style of convergence of socialism and capitalism began to appear. Even though the greatest develop of these views would take place later under Dubček. Zapotocki died in uh, 1957, and with the support of Khrushchev, Novotny became the president of the Czechoslovakian Republic. In 1960, in the background of the success of the second five-year plan and the completion of a collectivization, it was announced that uh, socialism was built in the Czechoslovakian Republic. New constitution was written down and the name Czechoslovakian Republic was changed to Czechoslovakian Socialist Republic. During this period, there was also a large amnesty for political criminals who clearly had anti-communist stances and with the growing right wing in the Communist Party only more destabilized the political situation. By the end of Novotny's reign, the preconditions for the catastrophic events of 1968 were fully prepared. The communists were able to successfully seize power in the post-war Czechoslovakia and achieve great successes in the beginning. Unfortunately, if Stalin's support of the Communist Party from the USSR greatly helped the communists gain power, after Khrushchev's arrival, the revisionists wave quickly got from the USSR to Czechoslovakian Republic as well. All this brought Czechoslovakia to the brink of destruction in 1968. About that we will talk in the next video. By the end of the video I would like to invite you to our Discord channel. Link will be in the description of this video. Ke konci tohoto videa bych vás rád pozval na náš Discord channel. Uh, odkaz bude v popisku videa. Goodbye. Ahoj.